Hostile detected. Archive agent safety can no longer be guaranteed. Fallout 4 is a post-apocalyptic role-playing game set in an alternate future with a campy, tongue-in-cheek retro style. In anticipation of Fallout 76, we've been comparing the guns featured in Fallout 4 to real-world guns, but today, we aren't going to look at just one gun. Rather, we're going to talk about the most common class of gun in the game, the pipe gun. In Fallout 4, various pipe guns are found scattered around the wasteland. It makes sense that the descendants of the survivors of a nuclear holocaust would have a lot of old, broken guns that have been refurbished and guns made entirely from scrounged parts. The pipe guns fit with the dingy, dirty, and discarded feel of the Fallout universe. If you're not familiar with the game series, just picture Mad Max with a 50s kind of Tomorrowland vibe and you'll be pretty close. In that setting, the pipe guns feel right at home. They are available in several calibers and, like other guns in the game, can be extensively modified, perhaps to an even greater extent than the other guns, given that they can be made into a pistol or rifle version and they can be converted to other calibers. There are automatic pistols, revolvers, submachine guns, and even sniper rifles. They look rough, and they are extremely common. Yet somehow, they remain relevant throughout most of the game because, as you unlock new perks, the customizations those perks allow make these pipe guns even more effective. Plus, they represent a good way to use up the ubiquitous 38 ammo found everywhere in the game. Although you might tend to use more powerful guns for the leveled up humans, super mutants, robots, and other enemies, a lot of players like to keep something handy to dispatch the numerous rad roaches and mirelurk spawn without wasting better ammo. It makes sense that a homemade pipe gun would be chambered in the low pressure and relatively common 45 auto and 38 special cartridges, but it is odd that the pipe revolver is chambered for the rimless 45 auto by default, and the automatic and semi-auto pipe guns are chambered in 38 by default. 45 auto is a rimless cartridge, which means the brass at the very base of the cartridge case does not extend past the wall of the case. The rim of a 38 Special would also make feeding a challenging problem for self-loading guns, and revolvers are normally chambered for rimmed cartridges to make extraction easier. Perhaps we could explain some of that away because the game world does have an alternate history, so maybe the 38 isn't actually 38 Special, but rather 38 Super or some other 38 caliber cartridge that was common in the Fallout timeline, but not our own. And to be fair, it does look like the pipe revolver is loaded with a moon clip. It leaves you wondering where all these moon clips came from though, because they certainly aren't common in this universe. If we want to get really detailed, there are quite a few small points that stick out about these guns, but ultimately, pipe guns are not representative of specific real-world firearm models, as with some of the other guns in this series, so we should probably allow for a bit of artistic license. Nevertheless, this series is about comparing Fallout guns to real-world guns, so the first question to answer is, can you really build guns out of scraps like you see in the game? The short answer is, absolutely. To prove it, I built a shotgun out of about $20 worth of stuff I bought at Home Depot. I can't show you precisely what I did or explain in much detail for fear of YouTube's ambiguous policies, but I can tell you that it is very, very easy, and even a knuckle-dragging Neanderthal like me can do it. It's perfectly legal to manufacture a firearm for yourself under U.S. federal law so long as it does not violate NFA rules and you don't make it with the intent of selling it. That worked! And of course you know that I had to shoot it into ballistic gel. For this test, I used a round of Ventura Double Lot Mini Buck. <laughs> this high-speed video was captured with a Kronos 1.4 from Aimed Research. If you'd like to create awesome high-speed imagery like this, contact Aimed Research and they'll set you up with a Phantom or Kronos camera rental or even capture stunning professional high-speed video for you in their lab. Alright, so because of the extreme close distance, the pellets didn't start separating from each other till about here. Obviously, they cut a really big channel up until there and then started creating separate channels. Total penetration, 26 inches for the deepest pellet. This is fairly typical performance for buckshot. A little bit further away and we'd see these pellets deviate from each other earlier on in the block. Anything over about 30 feet or so and they'll start impacting separately and create separate tracks from the very beginning. 
In either case, at any range, buckshot knocks the shit out of people. It may not be refined, but as you can see, it is brutally effective. Maybe not the best choice against a half dozen mole rats, but it could be used to great effect against a single home invader in the real world. Real world pipe guns aren't necessarily this rudimentary though. Any idiot can make a slam fire shotgun like I made, but with the slightest modicum of skill and access to simple tools like a drill press, it's possible to make much more impressive and refined guns. In the 1990s, a Briton named Philip Ludi decided to protest draconian English gun laws by designing and constructing a fully functioning submachine gun from hardware store parts, and he published the plans for all to see. In Australia, biker gangs commonly manufacture highly professional submachine guns. Forgotten Weapons did a fantastic episode on improvised and craft-built firearms about a year ago. But the undisputed king of improvised and home-built weapons is Royal Nunsuch. His designs are innovative and quite simple. Naturally, I asked him to comment on the practicality of manufacturing some of the pipe guns seen in Fallout 4. I mean, I can't say they're totally unrealistic. Obviously, with video games and movies, they're going to be somewhat exaggerated, of course. Um, I do like how they have the oil filter suppressor on the 308 pipe pistol revolver. Uh, it's a nice touch. If you're in an apocalyptic world, I could see one of these guns getting thrown together and looking something like this. Let's just say that. So this gun here is a 410 revolver shotgun thing. And then this is just a simple 12 gauge slam fire. And um, what I would like to see is that for them to put a simple slam fire in the video game instead of all these pretty complex pipe guns because simple slam fires are a lot easier to make and um, I think they're more of what you would actually see in a situation like the game portrays. In other words, it takes a ton and a lot of time to build something like this Whereas a pipe gun like this, you can throw together in less than 30 minutes if you know what you're doing. While some of the details may be fanciful, the overall concept of the pipe guns is certainly plausible. And even the execution of the guns isn't too far off. The only reasons we don't see more of this sort of thing in the U.S. is that the easiest to make guns are also the most illegal, and dependable real guns are affordable and readily available for law-abiding citizens. There is a lot more to this subject than would fit in this video, so please join the discussion below and feel free to ask questions. If you think I got something wrong, be sure to tell me. As always, please support our sponsors. We will never charge vendors for reviews, so to help us continue to provide this free-to-watch and impartial content, take a look at the ammo Ventura Munitions has to offer. They have a huge selection at great prices. Have a great day.